This time on Low Buck Garage, I try to operate a tailgate. I do some professional looking body work. And I try to use a tool that is way too small for the job. Now you may have seen this truck before in the Dodge truck teardown video. Uh, this doesn't actually belong to me. I bought parts off it, I stripped them off, and I put a lot of the parts on this. But that's a subject for a different video. So my buddy who owns this truck brought his trailer over last night. It was late, it was around 10 o'clock, and uh, we didn't have time to load it because it's got to be unloaded first. Because I found another investment. Now I love to give financial advice because I think I'm as good of a financial planner as I am at working on vehicles. What you need to do is invest in metal. Not precious, scrap. Because not only do you not lose value, it's a lot of fun to play with. I just got this for about scrap metal price. Now I actually don't know much about it. All I've seen is photos so far. Came in at 10 o'clock last night. Haven't even had a chance to look at it. But it's morning now. The sun's working on coming up. I figure we'll look at it together. Now this is on Marketplace. It was described as a 49 GMC two and a half ton. Now I know that's not true. The two and a half tons had two rear axles. This only has one, so I think it's a one and a half ton. Now the ad also said it was a 49, and it has a title that says the 49. Not sure if that's actually true, but it has it. We take a look at the front end here. This looks like the, I think it's the CCKW six by sixes. And uh, they did make, I believe it was called the G506, one and a half ton version. And I think this is kind of it. However, I've never seen one like this. Most of those are medium truck-like, uh, with a long bed, a long wheelbase, like 140 something inches, and like a flatbed over the tires. Now there are a lot of versions of this one and a half ton truck, and uh, some of them are really cool with really interesting bodies, like that one. But they all had the 145 inch wheelbase, except for one that I found. It is a 125 inch wheelbase bomb service truck and it has rear fenders, but a soft top. So I don't know if that's it either. I've never seen one with a pickup bed, so I had to buy it. Starting off, we have a tank, um, has a serious filler cap. Oh, let's go up one. We have wood blocks and a hand fabricated bed it looks like. That does not look factory, so I'm thinking this bed is homemade. Looks like it was pretty well made, so that's good. Yeah, it definitely, definitely does not look like a factory production unit. Those are torch marks, but the torching made nice angles to make it look like a factory style bed, so that's nice. Oh, the cap is labeled buy clean fuel. Keep it clean. That's good advice. You never want to buy dirty fuel, do you? So we have a filler. Oh, this doesn't go to this tank. That filler goes somewhere underneath. Uh, it's just welded to this tank, so that's interesting. This one seems to fill through this cap. And then it has a drain at the bottom here. So you can dump your fuel on the ground. Not sure where they're going with that. This truck actually came from Arizona. It's pretty solid. I was told there is a little rust. Um, we have some right here. That's not too bad. We'll see if we have more. Good old lever action shocks. Uh, we have some kind of lid welded to the bumper, very sturdy. Um, no idea what that's for. Uh, this doesn't look like rust, this looks like it's just a hole torn. Just a little floppy. Definitely military style lights, which makes me doubt the 1949 thing. Okay, it looks like it was supposed to be bolted here. It's just a little floppy. That looks like a factory brush guard. Now these lug nuts look loose but they're not. And that's a feature that I'm gonna show you later. That's one of the other main reasons I bought this thing. It's gonna be really cool. Oh, I like this. All right, this is cool. We have two tanks, two caps, one labeled gas with weld bead, one labeled oil with weld bead. That's a good way to label it. Those aren't coming off. Uh, again, we have a drain so we can dump our gas directly on the ground. Uh, oil tank. Also a drain to dump our oil directly on the ground. Really don't know about that one. But let's see. 
that large filler neck that was on the other side doesn't go to either of these tanks. So I'm not sure where that goes. Uh, we have a replacement door. Interesting. We got some kind of writing there. Not sure what that's for. Now it looks like this rear fender might need a little body work. There's a couple little kinks here and uh, a minor dent here where it's, you know, folded under. I just noticed this. You may have seen aftermarket diff covers with a couple ribs and stuff like that. That looks like factory strengthening ribs on the diff cover. This truck was meant for some heavy use. Now inside the bed here, this looks like the hood. Ooh, we got a spare tire. That's handy. And plywood, and that's worth more than scrap metal these days. What else we got in there? I don't know. Miscellaneous stuff. We'll have to explore that later. More lug nuts that look loose, but aren't. Now that should be of the 235 variety. Even has a Chevrolet embossed into the cover. That's nice. The air filter's not on it. That is not nice. Missing a radiator. I see the one-way valve for a Hydrovac, so we got one of those systems again. Some good quality wiring. This will be perfect. Here's another good example of the quality of wiring. These are the headlight wires. There's no insulation to be seen. We're going to take a sneak peek in the cab. I notice there's no door handles. That might be an issue. I'm not sure how to open these when there's just a hole. But the window's open, so let's look inside. Ooh, I like the front seat. Now that's a classy front seat. Uh, we got a steering wheel. That's good. Shift lever. Good. Leather levers. Not sure what they do, but we'll figure it out. Some trim rings. This thing's fancy. No rear window. There's gauges. Yeah, we got all the basic stuff. Now that looks like a military style ignition switch, no key. So that makes me think again, this is not really a 49. There's a first look. Now let's get it off the trailer and look a little more. I've got one flat tire, but this isn't hooked particularly well, so I'm going to leave it flat so I do more dragging and it doesn't roll into me, because uh, it's not particularly secure. Can you guess which tire is the flat one? I'm gonna go straighten that out. While I'm airing up this flat tire, I was looking around. See all those ribs on the brake drum? Those are for cooling. Which means this truck is meant for some serious work and well designed. I'm gonna have to put the camera down in order to use two hands on this wheel. There we go.
Now one other thing I hadn't really noticed when it was on the trailer, the whole front end is not symmetric. We have headlights on both sides. We have little tiny military style turn signals, but this side has some kind of, this is some kind of driving light. It's, it's pure straight on the bottom. It's got a rounded lump here and it's got the flutes here to spread the light out. So I'm not sure where they're going with this light, but it's interesting. And the most interesting thing, there isn't one on this side, none at all. Now, let's go back. This one has this nice little reinforcement. That looks like it was all part of the same brush guard. This side, it's not there, and there's no indication it ever was there. It doesn't look like it was cut off. And there's no hole in the fender. So I think from the factory, it was built with one headlight on that side, a headlight and an extra light on this side. It's on the driver's side. Maybe it's a driving light. I see we have some tow bar mounts here. These uh, used to have a tow bar on them. It appears they're completely folded flat. They're pretty flimsy for this size vehicle, so I don't think these are factory. The tow hooks, on the other hand, that's a three bolt mount, nice big cast piece. That looks like something the factory would do. And right here, oh, this is an interesting one. It's folded, but if you see the shape of that hole, it's a round hole with a relief on either side. That was meant for a crank starter. And then there's another hole. And then, see the inset on the crank pulley? That's where it went. So basically what you did is you took a handle, ran it through this hole, ran it through that hole, ran it through there. You could crank start this thing without any electricity, just right over. That's gotta be a pretty hefty swing, which means that it probably is a really low compression motor in all likelihood. This thing's definitely interesting. I see the dipstick tube is pinched closed and there's no dipstick in it. That is a really bad sign. There's no air filter on it. There's no hood on it. And the dipstick tube is open. So uh, this motor is seized. I don't know it, but I know it. Here we have the ground strap. It's bolted to the engine. It looks like it has a center bracket for bolting to the chassis and then the actual battery terminal. It looks like this function is both the ground strap and the negative cable. I'm gonna have to figure out how to open these doors. Let's look in there. Do we see anything? Aha! We have a square hole. I want to use some square stock and we can open these things. Now this fender looks like it also folded under, but then someone cut it off with a torch. Because that's the way you do body work. I'm all for that. One thing that I'm noticing is it looks like whoever originally made this bed made some nice little latches. I mean, granted those holes, those holes are torch cut. But uh, they did a really good job of it. Whoever built this bed was really good with a torch. I'm pretty impressed by the level of skill here for something that's pretty much a freehand art. But um, it looks like those stopped working at some point. We have the chains, this hook. You basically have a slot here. This slot should go over that hole and this hook would hook into it. But uh, all that doesn't work. And it appears that someone later took giant threaded rods and ran them right through. You could put a ton of force on these. So maybe someone is trying to compact something into the bed. I have no idea. These are gonna go, because I like that original latch. Same thing on the other side, except they took that threaded rod and bent it at a 90 degree angle to come out the side. But still has the nice handmade latch system with chain. So these threaded rods are going, that's gonna be working eventually. I got a spare tire, it's flat. A spare rim, that is way too wide for this size tire. Uh, I've got a hood with a massive dent in it. And uh, two exhaust pipes with glass packs that clearly did not come from this vehicle. These are from some kind of load equalizing hitch, I think. I don't have one, but they come in handy. There's two of them in here. Some kind of twist and lock hose fitting. Okay. That's a keeper. I think this is the cover that goes under the flywheel. Use fuel filter. I draw the line here. Some kind of plastic intake thing. Definitely not from this. Country Time Lemonade. Just a little old. <laughs> 
I almost think this might be the piece of carburetor I need for the original tow tug carburetor. We'll definitely save this. Firewood. Pipe. Got a pile for that. This spark plug has seen better days. Don't think I can reuse that one. Looks like some kind of heavy duty tow bar bolt on brackets. Not for this, but I'll keep them. Remains of a fan belt. Obviously I'm going to save these glass packs. I mean, come on, it's a match set. The hood's bent just a little bit. Time to do some body work. All fixed. Close enough. That hood turned out actually not half bad. Not good at all, but not half bad. All right, maybe three quarters bad. A quarter good, I'll go with that. Another air filter. Oh, here's the top to one of those air filters. There we go. Complete unit. I got a rock. Another spark plug I don't think I'll be able to reuse. Plastic, definitely not from this. Some good angle iron. Bottle opener. This could come in handy. Free pliers. They even work. I think I gotta open the tailgate to get to the rest. This one's on there. We may be cutting this one off. I'm gonna try to cut close to the bend so I can reuse some of this threaded rod because this stuff looks sturdy. Doesn't actually work. It's starting to move. Why won't you go down? Oh, there it's moving. Huh. It's good wood blocks. You need a shovel at this point. I got most of the dirt out of this bed. Let's take a look at it. Uh, it's got a diamond plate floor, which is nice. Uh, this one has a rounded wheel well with a big box built around it. All, looks like maybe 3 16 plate. So that's pretty sturdy. Now this other side, the wheel well is completely square. Not sure why. It looks like they just used flat sheet to make the wheel well and make it a box. Then, This is where that big filler neck is that wanted the clean fuel. Still don't know where that goes, but there's a hole directly above it in the bed. Another one right there. Not sure what that's for either. But overall, this thing's in pretty decent shape. This is definitely going to be useful. And I'm almost thinking that could be turned into a toolbox. Already built in. It wasn't until I was standing in the bed I noticed this one. The whole roof's caved in. Uh, gonna need a little more body work there. There, fixed. Good as new. I just noticed this. This wood is actually two inches thick. And it's nice tongue and groove stuff. It looks like it goes all the way under. Let's take a look under here. Looks like that wood goes all the way across. It looks like these channels originally held a wooden flatbed and then someone bolted the uh, steel floor to that. That kind of intrigues me. I kind of like the idea of the wooden flatbed. Um, but this steel one's on here for now, so I'll work with this. But I know it's under there, so that's a possibility. I got the tailgate down, but didn't want to go back up. A little bit of fine of adjustment here. This time on Low Buck Garage, I try to operate a tailgate. There we go. That's the way it's supposed to work. Now this bed is just about six feet long, so this is a short bed. This hitch has towed some heavy loads. This right here looked like a lid of an, a tire can or something like that to me. But uh, it's solid steel, it's thick. The uh, edges are all solid round, and it was clearly bent for a reason. And I don't know what that reason is. If you have any idea, let me know, because I'd like to know what this is for before I cut it off.
You know, so far I've been calling this a brush guard. Now that I have the hood on there, the hood goes right to the edge. This is no add-on brush guard. This is the grill. They actually made the grill out of solid steel bar and plate. No stamped aluminum or flimsy plastic here. It's time to talk about these, uh, what looks like loose lug nuts. They're not. Of course, left hand thread. I've taken all these lug nuts off the tire. I've got on a jack, it's off the ground. The tire is still mounted firmly. That's because these lug nuts are not for this tire. These studs are actually the lug nuts for this tire. See around, how, see how this one's smaller? Now this, it was what holds on this tire. So you install this lug nut to hold this tire down. This one comes later. Had this lug wrench kicking around the shop for years collecting dust. It has a square drive. Finally got to use this one again. So we tighten this lug nut on. Now there's one more piece of information you need. This wheel well is way too big and extends too far back for that tire. And that's because the factory designed this for more than that tire. This truck is designed from the factory to run duels not only in the rear, but in the front too. And this is what these outer lug nuts are for, the second tire. The inner one is my original flat tire. The outer one was a flat one I found in the back. Uh, I'm figuring two flats make a right. Should hold now, it's got four sidewalls. Now that's what the wheel well was supposed to have in it. I like that. Yep, that's a lot more sidewall to hold the weight. I had to do the back too so I could see what it looked like. Because when I was a kid, I started paying attention to vehicles. I always thought the back of dualies looked so cool. Why didn't they do it in the front? Well, I'm doing it now. We're gonna have dual wheels all the way around on this thing. Now I really like the double dually look here. And the fact that the factory actually intended this is even better. Because it means you're uh, gonna be able to use this truck in this configuration to do some serious amounts of work. And I like that. I think it's finally time to actually look under this. Uh, starting at the front, we have straight six. Interesting. It actually looks like, looks like the oil pan's been welded together there's a whole seam down the length of it. That's kind of interesting. It looks like the bottom part of the pan is squished and welded to a top part that it didn't come from originally. Uh, flywheel is nice and exposed, which probably means someone else tried to unseize this motor and wasn't successful. There's a transmission here, should be a four speed. Now the transmission is a standard two wheel drive one going to a drive shaft which goes to this transfer case, which is a big unit. Uh, we have the input there. We have a counter shaft here. That's where the speedometer cable is. Then we have an output here. That's the one that goes to the rear axle. And then another output over here going to the front axle. They make them a lot more compact these days, but I'm betting this thing is super heavy duty. Now here's the linkages from those two levers. And they both go into the transfer case. One is probably high and low, one is probably two and four wheel drive. We have our hydro vac unit. It's been disconnected, so I doubt it works. Now there's something I'm gonna to have to pay attention to. It looks like the running board was sliced open to put all those tanks on there. So removing those tanks will leave you with a gaping hole. The exhaust pipe ends right here. Nice straight pipe. I'm sure that was nice and quiet. There's a tube from the filler cap that said clean fuel, and that goes across the frame to a tank. This tank is actually centrally mounted. There's one frame rail. There's the other one over there. So this tank is really well protected. Uh, we've got a nice fuel line. Some good bailing wire attachments. Going to a nice fuel filter, more bailing wire. All this looks totally fine. I'm not sure about this piece of angle iron just bolted here. Let's keep going backwards. Oh. We got our emergency brake, that's a good one. We'll go back to the rear axle, and this center section has lots of ribs on it, so this is definitely a hefty axle. I heard these are a lot stronger than the Timken style axle, but they don't handle high speeds. Now take a look at the brakes on this thing. Now a lot of times drum brakes are pretty small compared to the wheel. This thing completely fills up the wheel, and that's a 20 inch rim. Those are big brakes. 
I'm gonna guess these brakes are at least 15 inches diameter, maybe more. More lever action shocks for the rear. And that's about it. Not much else here. Now the upsides of what I've seen here, if that motor and tranny is completely shot, I don't even need to get a four wheel drive one that matches. I just need something that goes to the transfer case that's mounted to the frame. So uh, this would be really easy to repower. Uh, but let's take a quick crack at that motor. Since the flywheel is exposed, we could put a screwdriver on that ring gear and give it a quick, quick check. I'm sure it's seized. I'm gonna take a crack at turning over this motor. Now, last time on my dirt bike video, I asked people to like and subscribe, and uh, then the YouTube algorithms will make good things happen, like getting more gears. Uh, if you could like and subscribe, maybe this motor will turn over. If it doesn't work, don't feel bad, because this thing is in bad shape, and it's been open for years. But we got to give it a try. Oh yeah, that's not moving. Nope, neither way. Okay. Well, we're going to have to try it with more people next time, but let's go on. Now, I've already changed tires in this truck, but I haven't even tried opening the door yet. So let's give that a shot. I have my broken handle left over from my half track project, square drive, let's see if it's the right size. Nope, doesn't fit. But it feels like it's not actually hitting, so let's go from the inside. Doing it, it's moving something. Kind of fits. All right, I can't turn it. I'm going to soak with oil. Let's try the other side. Nope, not working. So apparently the doors are staying closed for now. Uh, that's all right, doesn't run anyway. I'll suck with oil, eventually I'll get them to work. I'm just gonna stick myself in here and get a better look. Now there's a couple knobs right above the windshield. Not sure what they do at all. Now on the outside above the windshield, there is a bolt and nut. Uh, maybe this used to be a windshield wiper of some sort? Not sure. I love the curved effect of the dashboard. That's really cool. Standard military type gauges. I already know I can buy those for a little over $30 a set. You notice it has four pedals. One, two, three, four. That little one over there is the starter. That pedal goes to the floor, operates this linkage, which presses that button on the starter motor. You hit the pedal on the floor, hits the button, hits the starter. You're all set. No solenoid needed at all. You just have ignition on and off here, no start button. That pedal is the start button. It's interesting. Looks like some kind of lockout on the shift lever. Maybe a reverse lockout. That seems to go in either way. If you happen to know what this lever does, give me a comment. I have no idea. Uh, emergency brake, transfer case stuff. It's even got a heater. What do we have here? There's some lever on the dashboard that I don't know what it does. If you have any idea, let me know. Maybe it operates this vent here. I have seen some of the windshield popped open, but uh, I don't know if this one does that. That definitely looks like it opens. Now I've been hanging on to this for several decades. I think it would come in handy for some project because it looked really cool. Never found the right project. I think this is it. Because that just feels right. Yeah, the stack definitely helps. That's right. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, I actually can't go much further right now because the deal I made for this truck includes some parts. Now, the rest of my parts are these. Which should help out in this project a little bit. But I've got to wait till it gets here and all this extra stuff gets removed. So it's going to be a little while before I have those to work with. Now I'm planning on putting the best parts onto this truck, but I'm not sure what the best parts are yet. So I guess got to have this one sitting here calling to me and not work on it. Luckily, I've got a lot more projects to go. So I'll be working on a different fun project. Hope you're having fun too, and we'll see you next time.